welcome to ATCM. Today we are going to discuss a case about one 13 year old male who has a past history of stroke. Huh? Came to our ER in an incubator state. Huh? Was brought to our ER in an incubator state with the uh, his history of rec- uh, one other stroke. One in the more left, stroke. Yeah, one more stroke. In left corona radiator and putamen. And uh, with associated with LRT. Okay. Shall we sir? Okay. So uh, initially the patient was brought in a to- trolley. Intubated state on a initial assessment. In primary survey, airway was patent uh, as it was intubated, hmm. and in uh, breathing price, the uh, chest auscultation, air entry was bilaterally equal, and uh, during that time itself, we uh, found that uh, bilateral crepes were present. Okay. And uh, there was uh, adequate chest auscultation was noted, and uh, respiratory rate of 25 was set in the ventilator, and a saturation of 95 to 96, 97 maintaining. maintaining. Circulation, uh, peripheral process may maintain and pul- pulse rate of 122 per minute and BP of 110 over 70 was noted, okay. sir. GCS wise, uh, as this patient was intubated, the um, E1, VT, M1 was no- noted and pupils were uh, bilaterally react- uh, reactive. And temperature was normal at that time. So, uh, coming to the adjuncts, the GRBS was 327 okay. at that point of time. And uh, on uh, taking VBG, the pH of uh, pH was 7.34 with the uh, PCO2 of uh, 51 and bicarb of 27, sir. Okay. And uh, other than that, uh, which were noted, uh, we had to note that this uh, creatine was 2.4. 2.4. Sir. And uh, is this patient is having a renal failure? Uh, yes, sir. Huh? Renal failure also. Is, or or there is an acute on chronic failure. Uh, it means acute acute, acute kidney injury. Acute kidney injury. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, ECG was showing uh, sinus uh, tachycardia, sir. Okay. So, in secondary survey, the history is that uh, he was a known case of a stroke on antiplanet medication and he uh, he uh, was uh, he stopped antiplanet medication for trying an Ayurvedic treatment okay. for the uh, history of stroke. Uh, he was having some deficits. And uh, following which, uh, after taking the, uh, stopping the uh, Ayurvedic medication, uh, antiplanet medication for one week, patient uh, was found in a drowsy state with urinary incontinence, aphasia, and patient was later taken on to a nearby hospital, where he developed a seizure episode, and later MRI was uh, taken, which showed an acute infarct in left corona radiator and posterior putamen. Okay. And from there, uh, they managed with, uh, the, uh, after, he was taken after the window period, and there's a, like a wake-up stroke. Uh, so, uh, he was managed with antiplanets and during the hospital stay, he developed breathlessness and fever and uh, was like a saturation drop, sudden saturation drop, sudden, the patient was intubated okay. and was referred to a hospital for further management. So what are the features of cortical stroke? So, cortical stroke, uh, patient can have aphasia, hmm. uh, weakness, hemiparesis and uh, a sensory loss, motor loss, motor hmm. loss. Motor loss. No motor sensory. loss. Other than that, the seizure is very important. Mm. Cortical seizure, uh, stroke can present with seizure, neck stiffness. Neck stiffness is a feature of hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic stroke. stroke. But uh, seizure can be there in both uh, ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. Mm. So that that is very important. Whereas internal capsule say, uh, stroke uh, may not produce seizure. And even uh, brainstem stroke produce, may not produce seizure. And uh, he was on medications, uh, clopilet and atorvastatin. And past medical history is that it's a known case of CVA, right caudate and put, uh, putamen uh, along with right uh, frontoparietal temporal cortical region and uh, diabetes. Okay. And is it diabetic? Diabetic patient, sir. And controlled? Uh, was controlled previously, mm. but uh, on evaluation from our side, we was, uh, he was found to have... Um, Elevated GRBS in the previous VBG and we sent the serum ketones. Huh. Serum ketones came out to be positive. Positive. So ketones are positive. Uh, uh, diabetes is there. Uh, HbA1c? HbA1c was uh, nearly 8.4. 8.4. So what do you think it is? Sir, uh, in stroke uh, we can have hyperglycemia or hypoglycemic state. Uh, hyperglycemia as such will produce stroke. Mm. Hyperglycemia because of the viscosity, increased viscosity of blood. Ketone bodies are positive here, but there is no acidosis. Mm. pH does not show acidosis. 7 point? Uh, 7 point. Uh, 
around 80 or uh, 90 this is slightly high what it indicates uh, there is a pre renal component okay. okay urea is higher higher than uh, expected range of uh, creatinine mm-hmm. like creatinine mean if you take it as for for uh, every 1 degree 1 mg you get nearly 20 okay, okay. so it is slightly higher but uh, that may be due to dehydration dehydration, dehydration due to and the dk diabetes uh, uh, hyperglycemic state. hyperglycemic state. Okay. and uh, other than that uh, the um, anion gap was within uh, near uh, normally in what the is the albumin albumin not uh, not, not that. Okay. Yeah, albumin was uh, low what is the corrected, albumin was corrected uh, sodium level here corrected sodium sir it will be uh, 300 300 well 130 300 what is the sugar value 370 370 some sir so uh, 136 1.8 uh, uh, for every 1 means it will be around uh, 140 nearly 1 uh, 130 138 uh, so sodium is slightly higher 138 yes, okay so if it is very high like uh, if corrected sodium is 145 and above what is suspect associated as hyperosmolar cell hyper hyperosmolar but here it is uh, in the range so ketone bodies are positive slightly acidotic sugars are high so you can think about ketoacidosis with stroke stroke may be due to the ketoacidosis uh, stroke may be due to the, uh, the hyperglycemic hyperglycemic state, state induced uh, hypercoagulability hmm. okay blood will, viscosity will increase okay and the inner was also Uh, elevated. Elevated. Okay. Why INR is elevated in this type of patients? What may be the reason? So, if patient was on uh, aspirin globulet. Aspirin will not increase INR. Hmm. Aspirin will produce only platelet dysfunction. Globulet also will produce platelet dysfunction. This is due to sepsis. Okay. okay. Infection. Hmm. Procalcitonin is high. INR is elevated. Hmm. So, it will be mostly sepsis. Now, you have to see. This is prothrombin time. Hmm. So, that is elevated. no you have to always check for the sorry so you have to check aptt also for okay. you have you done aptt yes sir aptt was done ha ah. aptt was uh, 40 so 13 38 or something is normal mm. slightly elevated mm. so both intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway is involved mm. so now you have to de- see the other uh, common pathway that is fibrinogen hmm. have you done fibrinogen uh, fibrinogen was no concern okay so what is the importance of fibrinogen suppose fibrinogen levels are very low what do you suspect uh, sir uh, dic dic disseminated intravascular so prothrombin time is elevated aptt is elevated and fibrinogen levels are low means you have to think about dic okay yes, so this patient may go to dic because both are elevated now we have to watch for the fibrinogen or once you treat it may improve okay ketone bodies are 3 plus 3 plus okay for, for, for further management as a ketone bodies was a, uh, positive mm-hmm. along with the high blood sugars we mm-hmm. started with the iv uh, insulin along with the iv fluid correction okay, what what will you start first as iv insulin or fluid iv fluids sir. so fluid will be the first one okay what fluid do you give normally uh, can give uh, 
ഹാഫ് എൻ എസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ സർ സോഡിയം മാസിന്റെ എലിവേറ്റർ സ്വിച്ച് Well, that's okay, but sugar, sodium is not elevated. Ah. It is the normal range. Ah. If it is very high, well, like 140, 145, then you have to give half ah. an ounce. Here, normal saline normal can saline. be given. Okay. So, uh, here sugars are high, dehydrated state, you can give normal saline. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then, normal saline according to the standard ah. protocol given for DK. DK. Yes, sir. Okay. So, you have to give how much, uh, the average fluid deficit in DK will be how much? In, uh. more than 6 liters more than 6 liters in uh, dk and more than eight, nearly 8 liters in hhs yes, yes. okay so you start a normal saline next is what uh, and for initial uh, after the initial fluid resuscitation hmm. you have to start with the insulin infusion okay before that you have to check the Except potassium, the potassium right? initial potassium is 4.3 that uh, shows potassium is normal if it is potassium is low less than 3 or 3.5 then you correct potassium KCL, hmm. injection or IV you can give. Hmm. Then, uh, first normal saline, then potassium, potassium correction. Third one is? Third one is insulin, insulin. Insulin. Okay, okay. insulin infusion. So, how much insulin you go give for this patient? So, according to uh, weight, we can start huh? uh, 0.1 K, uh, unit per kg. Okay, initial, uh, either bolus or infusion you can infusion. start. So, this patient may be 70 kg. So, you start around 7 so, units uh, uh, as a... bolus or then start it as infusion mm. okay then according to standard protocol that is uh, what protocol it is uh, our protocol is uh, we are following a delta protocol delta protocol and okay. we follow it according to the okay. protocol okay so what happened afterwards afterward uh, we are uh, give, starting with the iv fluids and mm. uh, along with the uh, as the potassium was in the normal range started with the uh, insulin. insulin infusion and continue with the iv fluid and the insulin infusion ah. uh i and after uh, after a one day our potassium began to drop sir okay and we started with the potassium correction also okay what happened to this potassium why it is dropping so because insulin is a uh, potent potassium shifter okay uh, it can shift the, shift potassium, the potassium from the intravascular to intracellular in space. space so there will be transient decrease in the potassium, potassium. but what you have to remember is uh, when you over correct suppose you are started correcting we have to correct it when you are correcting you have to be very careful because the potassium which is shifted uh, to cells can shift back to the uh, space and your uh, patient's creatinine is very high mm-hmm. 3.7 so then afterwards if you don't monitor the potassium he will go to hyperkalemia so we have to be very careful we can correct the potassium but we have to monitor it uh, then and uh, on f- further days also with the patient's condition was not uh, thereby improving sir okay. because as the patient was in a, a sepsis sepsis state with the lrt and also dk with the associated cva okay. his uh, his, uh, his sensorium was not improved not improved and uh, also uh, his dk was also not getting resolved in the uh, usual uh, as uh, like a normal patient sir okay. it was continuing for about uh, con- we continued for insulin infusion and iv fluid about 5 days sir okay and as after that only we got a car, uh, fully serum ketone negative okay. state ketone body will become negative only 3 to 4 days mm. till take time okay till then you have to continue the insulin infusion and uh, other than that we started with the iv antibiotic also as patient was having a um, lrta with sepsis sir okay what uh, antibiotics we normally choose for lrta lrta we can start with the uh, cephalosporin okay ceftriaxone ceftriaxone uh, cefotaxime or piperacillin disabactam depending on the severity of pneumonia you have to select the antibiotic and okay. and, and by that uh, we are started with the septriaxone itself sir okay. and the crp began to show a decrease in trend okay and also uh, from uh, by one week the crp uh, com- completely kind of uh, ha- having a sh- uh, showing a going down trend and okay. procal was repeat procal was also negative okay. by that it is coming down coming down so procalcitonin is a prognostic marker also when it is coming down that indicates uh, infection is coming down and when the numbers are very high that indicates high level of infection okay and uh, as the uh, he has also having a associated ak huh. we uh, done a usg also by okay. that time okay. which was showing only just left kidney appearance normally in diabetic kidney will be bulky mm-hmm. all diabetic kidneys initially it will be bulky. bulky whereas other type of renal failure it will be constricted small kidney is classical feature of chronic renal failure in other conditions but in diabetic kidney it will be large 
but afterwards after sometimes that also will become small okay mm-hmm. repeated uh, infection repeated infarction it will become also small mm-hmm. okay and also we did a uh, echo sir okay. as the patient was in a uh, nearly 40s range with a history of re- uh, recent stroke we ne- we also had to find out the cause for actual Uh, recurrent stroke okay uh, young stroke uh, multiple uh, so cause echo what you expected here why you were doing it echo? so um, uh, there can be a mural thrombus okay. or uh, uh, valvular lesions okay. or uh, like a, uh, some uh, thrombus the reason for the thrombus, thrombus can originate from the heart, heart. because uh, di- chronic diabetic patients can have ischemic heart disease all these things yes, okay sir. and uh, we were planning for an extubation for the patient okay but the patient's condition was not improving and there uh, he was not showing any features of uh, limb movement or uh, any any other okay. and was not following our commands also okay so further uh, our plan was to do a tracheostomy for the patient okay and uh, after 6 uh, days 6 uh, to 7 days of treatment his uh, his condition was not improving okay. so we did the tracheostomy sir okay and tracheostomy after tracheostomy uh we uh, initial days we connect, uh, we was in the ventilator state also and for 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 on the further date we removed the uh, from the ventilator if he was uh, breathing through the tracheostomy tube okay and we started with the antiplatelets also in from the first day okay, okay okay so what what are the other causes for young stroke young stroke mostly it can be associated with sle or vasculitic uh, condition in female patients sle vasculitic yeah. conditions are common male yeah. also it can occur mm. then anti phospholipid antibody syndrome anti phospholipid antibody syndrome also very common in female patients protein c protein s deficiency okay protein c protein s deficiency can occur then uh, uh, anti thrombin deficiency anti thrombin 3 deficiency can occur then um, like a factor 5 factor 5 gadam mutation and another important condition is uh, here it is mostly due to hyperglycemic state mm. blood is becoming more thick okay that may be the reason second thing is ecs smoker Uh, he was a smoker okay the what condition can co- coexist with smoker uh, smoker smoking causes uh, atherosclerosis is very important mm-hmm. hyper homocysteinemia also very common mm-hmm. in smokers mm-hmm. so we have to do a, a homocysteine level okay so that has to be done however this patient is having recurrent stroke two episodes of two stroke. stroke so we have to rule out all these conditions but mostly this stroke is due to hyperglycemia induced uh, hypercoagulable state once you give fluids mostly this patient will improve but this patient had seizure severe seizure what other things are possible he had continuous seizure outside and then only he was intubated and transferred to this hospital so this patient had heavy seizures in that hospital so what else is possible other than this simple diabetic ketosis and coma scar epilepsy scar epilepsy is scar epilepsy is a previous stroke can produce epilepsy, epilepsy. that then, is one possibility then uh, hemorrhage but this patient is not improving even after a five days treatment patient consciousness not improving what else you suspect um, a mass in the hypoxic hypoxemic state okay. so continuous seizure who was not intubated for some time this patient can very well go to hypoxemic en- encephalopathy okay. so that should be done you can do an mri after nearly uh, uh, mri can be done after 48 to 72 hours mm. then it can pick up the lesion mm. okay so mri is a must in this type of patients where the patient is not regaining his consciousness even after adequate treatment so see and in a patient who had seizure and he can develop hypoxemic ischemic encephalopathy he, we can also do eeg why eeg is done eeg to uh, know how find the brain activity of the patient that is one thing whether brain activity is good or not mm-hmm. the second thing is, thing is status epilepticus mm-hmm. huh? some patients epilepsy will be there continuous epilepsy will be there but there will not be any motor component mm-hmm. okay that also can be ruled out eeg brain activity also can be ruled out by eeg so what else is there Uh, so uh, other things other than this patient may remain in your icu for some more time long period uh, for long period one is uh, tracheostomy should be done mm-hmm. uh, because this patient is going to be ventilator dependent for a longer period mm-hmm. so tracheostomy is done what other things so, ca- we have to take care in icu icu we have to uh, maintain her, the his high chance of bed sore bed sore so frequent positioning, positioning should be done that should be advised the nursing staff then then uh, fluid retention which in then can cause um, 
very difficult to get a cannulation uh, to get uh, put a central line okay mostly you need a central line for a longer treatment then you need to have uh, a catheterization rails tube all these things are very important because this patient cannot uh, urinate so you have to put a catheterization that care has to be taken then rails tube has to be uh, put and the early feeding is very very important you cannot give continuously iv fluid for a longer period so early feeding is very very important how much insulin is getting now uh, and uh, we stopped the insulin from the infusion we stopped the stop and we started with ins- insulin uh, regular, sub- insulin. regular insulin. insulin so how do you stop infusion protocol to uh, subcutaneous insulin so uh, we uh, take a one one long days uh, total infusion oh, rate okay each hour we, are, it, we may be giving two units three units like that so total insulin has to be taken okay. from the total insulin uh, will uh, suppose the total insulin is 100 units in a day what do you do next day uh, we want to switch to subcutaneous insulin so we divide the dose into half oh. and uh, the f- first half will be uh, divided into three doses and can be given a subcutaneous in- injection oh. and the other half was uh, in initial dolus uh, bolus dose okay so a- a- either you give three uh, fixed divided doses morning evening like 100 units we are giving 30 30 30 you can give but uh, whatever it is you have to give uh, overlap the subcutaneous to infusion okay. so continue infusion give an uh, injection of uh, subcutaneous then continue the infusion for another half an hour to one hour then stop so the infusion, infusion. Uh, you give time to absorb the insulin so 30 30 30 you can give or 30 30 uh, regular insulin night time you can give uh-huh. long acting uh-huh. insulin 30 uh-huh. So whatever it is, uh, uh, when you are giving infusion that is more active, so 100 units if you are giving, only 75 units may be required for subcutaneous. So you can give 25, 25, 25. So that may be enough and uh, then you have to switch to other types of insulin on the, on the time of discharge. Mm-hmm. Can we give OHS for this patient? No sir. OHS are not recommended. Okay. Any, so you, uh, from this case what we have to understand is, Diabetic ketoacidosis is one condition uh, because of the high viscosity of blood, patient can develop stroke, myocardial infarction, uh, all other complications like, uh, like our vasculitis he can have. So the fluid is the treatment of choice. You give more fluid, uh, the viscosity will come down. But here the patient is not improving. Mostly this patient might have developed hypoxemic, ixemic, uh, hypoxemic and ischemic encephalopathy. That may be the reason. So MRI has to be done to rule out that condition. Then only we can make a proper diagnosis. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.